Okay, brace yourself for one of the longest introductions we've ever done here. Social media is a great platform to tell you who we want to be, not who we are. I'm back, motherfucker! I'm back! All of this fucking song turned to burn and shit! Got me back! Look at yourself, man. What am I gonna do today to change what I see in this mirror? Fuck people! I don't give a motherfucker. You can't care what anybody thinks about you. And tell people to go fuck themselves. It's strictly about you finding who you are. So many people die, live a hundred years, never fucking know who they are. The most important step we ever take in life is our next one. A lot of us get our feet stuck in concrete. We get our feet stuck in concrete because we're afraid to make enemies. We're afraid to speak what's on our mind. If you can walk on fucking water, trust me, your haters are safe. You can walk on water because you can't fucking swim. Put your shit on, we're going for a run. We don't like that challenge. We like that person who says, hey, you know what, man, I don't feel good today, man. And they say, oh, it's okay, brother. We'll take a day off, man. We'll get a pizza and shit, watch the game. We like that. We, we love that feeling. Why? Because you understand, man, we're good, bro. We don't want that motherfuckers like this. Hey, man, no, bro. Get your fucking shit on, man. Stop being a punk. You are listening to the Serial Entrepreneurs and Business Leaders podcast, where we study billionaires and simplify their nuggets of wisdom. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to the Serial Entrepreneurs and Business Leaders podcast, where we break down what it is that has made these billionaires so successful. Welcome to this fake interview with David Goggins. Okay, so David Goggins may not be a billionaire. The thing is with David Goggins is he may not be like this massive CEO of this huge company. Now he's made a lot of money through the stuff that he does, but what I think what he teaches and what he can show you will teach you so much about business from the mindset perspective. I believe David Goggins is the most inspirational person of 2020. And not only will he teach you to make yourself mentally strong through the tough time, but also if you understand what David's saying, you will find your weaknesses and then you will crush them. Okay, so David, talk to us about vulnerability. Why is it so important? The one thing that made me who I am today is being vulnerable. It's breaking myself down to the absolute rock bottom and being able to tell people who I am. And that's how I fixed it. Literally, you know, look somebody in the eye and say, you know what, man? I have a whole bunch of character flaws. I've lied about this. I've cheated here. I'm, I'm insecure here. This isn't the real me. I lied to you about that. I wanted your acceptance in life. All those things happen, but the thing about it is that we get judged so quickly, we don't go to the to where it happened. Life created this person, me. Life, life created me to be this fucked up person that I was back in the day. And I had to realize, man, that's okay, man. It's not my fault. Now I gotta go back and fix this shit though. Mm-hmm. So a lot of this isn't your fault why you do some things you do, why you feel the way you feel. But no one's coming back to save your ass. You have to go back to where the shit started, wherever that place is for everybody, and have the courage to go back there and start fixing what broke you. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's why I, I was like, hey, I'm fucked up. I'm gonna go back and fix this stuff. Yeah, I think that's very powerful. You really do need to know what it is that you need to fix so that you can address it. Let's hear a bit more about your story, David. I was um, born in Buffalo. My dad was uh, on skating rinks and on bars, and he was a very insecure guy. And he was an alcoholic. He uh, used to get women for favors. So my dad, I'm not saying he's a pimp. I always say he's a pimp. My mom said the proper way to say this is that your dad used to get women and he would exchange women for favors. So there you go. He was a fucking yeah. pimp. That was my dad. He was he was a guy that, that, that didn't care much about anything but himself. We lived on Paradise Road. The second that door was shut in that house, it was game on. The real him would come out. So when you're born into that at a young kid and, and like you're getting beat for no reason. Whippings are whippings, man. Yeah. But this guy would beat you for no reason just because he was drunk, just because he saw you, whatever. The the beatings were horrible, but the mind torture was the worst. Mm-hmm. He got so deep in my head as a young kid, and that really fucks up your foundation. You know, when when you're born, man, there's some there's some sensitive years in there, man, where your brain starts to develop courage, confidence, all those things. And my dad was stripping that away from everybody. The worst thing to do is when you see your mom getting beat senseless at a young kid. That shit scars you permanently. And what about your brother? My brother, I'm not calling him a coward by any means. 
he handled it very different than I did. He would go in his room. He didn't want to see the beatings. I would protect my mother. In that, I saw a lot more of the violence. In me trying to protect her, I really got beat. But domestic violence was only one of the challenges you were facing at the time. I had a learned disability. I was stuttering. I was battling so much shit that I never even told my mom about because I, because she was battling her own demons. Right. And she didn't find out later through the school systems and through me failing and through me, you know, all these issues I went through. She found out a lot when you're already in, in the deepest, darkest dungeon of all time. And I think that's where um, I started really creating myself. I had to really start creating a, a certain pattern, a certain process, a certain kind of indestructible toolbox to handle my life. What made you risk everything? It started off with the Rocky and Rambo movies. Right. You know, those were kind of like okay. my father's when I was coming up. But then when I finally met this guy named Scott Guerin, this guy that fell off it, you know, he had a, a parachute accident. A guy crashed through his parachute and he fell 13,000 feet pretty much to his death because his, his parachute collapsed and he would, you know, he fell 120 miles an hour to the ground. I mean, Banana it's, it's and, disgusting, yeah. right? And um, so he hit the ground and I met him a couple years later. And I was like, man, that is the real Rambo. Where did the work ethic come from though? People think it's from running and everything. No, it's not from SEALs, it's not from running. It was from the countless hours teaching myself how to fucking read and write. So when you decided to become a Navy SEAL, you quit your job, you risked everything. You had to lose all this weight just to even be eligible. You had to pass all these tests when you had all these sort of mental difficulties growing up as a kid. Just you couldn't pass these tests without copying and cheating. Your marriage wasn't working and you were terrified of water. You had these water tests you had to pass too. But you gave up and you risked everything just for the chance to become a Navy SEAL. And even if you were successful, there was no guarantee that you would actually be accepted because you'd still have to go through all the Navy SEAL training. And it's something like 200 people applied and then maybe 30 from each Navy SEAL batch get through. But you risked everything just to get into that position. I'm trying to be a Navy SEAL. At this time, I was still 200 and some odd pounds. I still had more uh -huh. weight to lose. So think about this. I put everything on David Goggins to be a Navy SEAL. It's like going to the crap table with, with your last thousand dollars. And you say, you know what? I'm gonna put everything on this fucking, on, on black. Hopefully I win, if not, I'm broke. I put my whole life, a guy that was scared of the fucking water, a guy that could fucking taught himself how to read and write, on being one of the hardest motherfuckers on the planet. Think about that shit. A guy that came from nothing. I put my whole life and I'm gonna go out here and put everything on David fucking Goggins to be a Navy SEAL. Not to go be a fucking, you know, Boy Scout or some shit, a Navy SEAL. And I and I, I, I look at that and I did all this shit just to get the opportunity to succeed. That's what people don't fucking understand, man. And people see the, the end result. I remember that guy saying, my God, man, I can't believe what the fuck I've just done. I put everything, ruin relationships, ruin this, ruin that, put everything on the fact I have to become someone in this world or I'm no good for anybody. What made you risk everything? It comes from a disgusting place of not being fulfilled in your life, afraid of dying, having never accomplished anything. That's a fear that some people run away from that people don't want to face. When you have a real fear of dying and being just another person, that I live to pay the bills, I made a thousand dollars a month. This is my life, I spray for cockroaches, man. If that makes you feel good, that's great. It didn't make me feel good. I wanted to the first time in my life, after 26 years, it was 24, 25, wherever I was, I wanted to feel good about myself. And that was, that was the ticket. You believe in uh, visualization too, right? So before I went to Bud's and I was losing all this fucking weight and shit, I saw myself walking across the fucking stage at 191 fucking pounds. Cause that's what I had to get to, to, to get into the door. I saw myself six months, a year later, whatever it's going to take me to do it. I saw myself walking across that stage, getting that fucking certificate of graduation from Bud's. And I was able to be there at 300 fucking pounds. And that feeling that I was nowhere near that fucking feeling. I was able to put myself there a million times every fucking day and that feeling of like, my God, that is gonna feel fucking amazing. That's what made me suffer. That's what allowed the pain to be real and say, this is worth it. I wanna feel for this fucking next 18 months, it took me 18 fucking months to finally become a Navy to finally you know, just get through butts. 18 months, it's six months, it took me 18. That's what woke me up every fucking morning was I'm gonna put myself through this much fucking pain and suffering for a few seconds. That's all it is. A few seconds of joy. And it's so fucking worth it, man. But generally, how key do you think visualization is? Visualizing is, is my biggest tool of life. 
That's why I, I, I've been able to put myself in cold water, put myself in a hundred mile race millions of times before I've done it. And I've been able to go through the race and see how I'm gonna feel at mile 50. Almost to the, almost to the exact, exact feeling. One thing I completely align with you on is the importance of focus. I have to be very present in everything I do. I'm not thinking about shit. That's what, that's what gives me a huge advantage in life, especially today, in this day and age, with so much shit going so fast and everybody wants to keep everything going, everything up and everything. I wanna be the greatest, you know, the greatest multitasker of all time, not me. If I put my 100% into what's in front of me, I will destroy it. If I'm out here just multitasking and shit, I'm gonna half-ass everything I do. So that's, it, it is the most important thing in the world to me is being focused at the task at hand. What really seems key to you is doing things that are really hard. I'm referring particularly to your Navy SEAL training experience. I was very fortunate to go through three times and not in a sadistic way, in a life-changing, growing way. I found out so much about myself through going through that training three times and I went through the hardest part of the training three times. I spent most of my time in buds in first phase. In the hell week. In the hell yes. weeks. And in that grind, I got time to examine myself I caught the live autopsy. But as I was there for so long, I got a really good chance to sit back because now the cold water is just water now. It's no longer cold anymore. Your mind starts to change. They say get in the water, most people think about it. For you, it became my life. So I started learning that if you start to change your mindset versus it being like, oh my God, this sucks. I became a professional bud student. So I wasn't gonna leave until I graduated. So I started realizing if this is my home, this is what I am, I had to always reset the bar. I had to reset my new norm. There always had to be a new norm. So one thing we don't do is we don't have a new norm. My new norm is you get up every fucking morning at four o'clock and you suffer. This is your new norm. That became my new fucking life. Most people want to get out of it. I said, no, motherfucker, this is your new life. This is who you are. You, your new norm is you wake up and you suffer. And I started realizing if that's my mentality, this shit ain't hard anymore. <laughs> right. Your fucking new norm is you yeah. wake up, you get in the fucking cold water, uh -huh. you're gonna be here till the shit's fucking done. Whenever they say you're out, you get out. So my new norm, so I, I do that now today. My new norm now is if I'm doing a 200 mile run, your new norm now, man, is you fucking are doing 200 fucking miles. I'm interested to know more about what you learned about the brain. And you know, I, I started learning the mind a lot, how to get myself jacked extremely fast like in a horrible environment when everybody's miserable. I learned how to really find strength in the misery when everybody's suffering, everybody's all poopy pants and their mentality's down and everything. I started just like, my God, this is where I shine. And I started using all that misery for tons and tons of tons of drive and motivation to, to, to then lead people further. Because you can get a lot of power through misery. And once people see that, my God, Goggins is fucking going, then everybody says, Roger that. Let me get my shit and go too. So I started realizing that if you can just find strength just a little bit longer, you will have a crew of people following you along the way. I don't want to focus on this too much because it's not that related to business, but how did you get through those injuries? What I do is like what I've done through everything, it, which isn't real smart. I mean, it, it works for me. So I'm not saying do this. Is I've trained through a lot of my injuries. And I started developing, I, I started doing that in butts, in SEAL training, because in SEAL training, you know, they, you, know, you got to start from day one or they just kick you out. So I started from day one enough. So my third time going through, I was really jacked up. Well, you went, you had pneumonia. Yeah, I had pneumonia and I had really bad stretch fractures. So my stretch fractures, so I was literally, I would put a sock on and then duct tape my foot all the way up to the top of my, of my calf. And because my stretch fractures were so bad, so like the pivot point between my ankle in my shin, I just cast that all the way up. And so I went through for several months, for a few months with stress fractures. What was crazy about that is they healed. By the time I got to third phase, my stress fractures were healed. And I don't even know how, rhyme or reason behind it. I ran on them, a few months later they were healed. What's your opinion on quick fixes? We like to take these very quick fixes in life. We want the six minute abs approach to life. Yeah. Nah, man, there's no permanent in that. Yeah. There's no permanent in that, man. There's no scarring. There must be scarring. But what if you couldn't run or lift weights? And whatever my 100% will be. I don't know what's gonna happen to me. Tomorrow, like, what if you can't run? I will figure what the fuck I can do and do that. That would be my new 100%. You must continue to find your new 100%. Whatever life throws at you, you must find what you can do now. I may become the best, you know, 
scientist of all time. Who knows? Watch out. You know what I'm saying? Watch <laughs> out. <laughs> Let's talk about that crazy race you did. Um, that race I did that made SEAL training look like a like a child's play in ranger school. That that first hundred miler I did, where I shit on myself and all kind of stuff. That 19 hours it took me with no training. I sum it up like this. You're talking about struggle, how, how you can put so much of life into struggle. In that 19 hours, I lived five years. Five years of struggle, of happiness, of, of depression, success, failure. In 19 hours, that's what's great about some of these things I do. You get a, a wide range of life in just 19 hours. You know, like when you get to like mile 50 in your mind saying, we got to get out of here, man. And then you get to like mile 60, okay, we're feeling good. You have all these highs and lows that you have to manage within this suck fest of 19 hours. And that's what I get from a lot of these different things that like human growth, you know, growth of the mind. Without friction, there is no growth. Without friction, there's no growth. Do you enjoy all this suffering though? I was 290 pounds twice in my life. I do not like to do the things I do but there's humongous satisfaction from doing it. There's humongous satisfaction from lacing your shoes up saying, I don't really want to go for a run today. And then running. And then yeah. getting back and saying, wow. I did it. I did it. Yeah. And that's what it's about. It's about these small steps to doing things you don't want to do. When do you rest? When do you recover? I don't want to scare people, but the truth answer is, I don't take any days off. No days. No days. Seven days a week. Seven days a week. Okay, so this section of the show is a bit different. Let's look at your Mulligan Brothers highlights. So you wake up, what goes through your brain? It's another early morning. Every morning, every day of our lives, we have choices to make. You have the choice to stay in bed, to say, forget it, I'm not gonna work out today, or forget it, I'm not gonna work hard today. You always have a choice every single day of your life. Done today. No one cares what you did yesterday. You gotta change your dialogue. What have you done today to better yourself? Today's another day. Today's another day that I'm faced with another choice to make. So I'm making the choice again to put my shoes on early in the morning and get active again. Make the right decision. Do you believe people are stuck how they are? Like a leopard can't change their spots, for example. I wasn't born this motherfucker. I made him. At the bottom of insecurities, fear, self-doubt, lies, was me buried in the fucking fetal position. How I got out of that was recognizing it, being honest with it, being truthful with it, and then fixing it. We like to live on social media with lies about ourselves, how great we are. Get to the source and fix the problem. Doing something that sucks every single day, why? I'm a big believer in doing something that sucks every single day of your life. I believe it's a key component and to strengthen your mind. Every day you're trying to find more of what you're capable of. And that's the big question. What are you capable of? Stop doing the things that you do every day. If you run every day, go swim. I'm all about cows in the mind. Do something that sucks. So you're literally uh, flipping tires during our interview, huh? Don't get it twisted. It's not about flipping tires. I'm in Las Vegas right now and it's hot as shit. It's not about any of that. But what it is about is a lot of us give total control to life. We don't have any control of it. We just give all control to life. I do this shit every morning to prepare my mind for what life's gonna throw at me. A healthy body gives you a healthy mind. That's what it's about. So how do you beat life? Life is one big tug of war between mediocrity and trying to find your best self. So there's tricks to all this crap in life. Life is one big head game. One trick in this situation is... In combat, you wear body armor. But what we do wrong is we don't strengthen our minds. You gotta strengthen your mind, take control of that. So then when you get out in the real world and they fuck you up, you got protection. Taking souls is a really interesting concept. What do you mean by it? I often talk about taking souls. This morning, this person, I usually train alone. This person wanted to run with me. 
And I said, fine, we'll run 15. This morning comes, there's storms coming in this way. And the person calls and said, hey, why don't we do it tomorrow? Taking souls is when I told the motherfucker, I'm gonna run 15 today and I'll run with you again tomorrow. That's what taking souls is about. Don't worry about the elements and what's going on. You gotta get out there and get it. He wasn't the only one that thought about taking the day off because the storm is coming in right now and there's not a soul out here but me. If you want to get better, do the shit that no one else wants to do. Do the shit that no one else is even thinking about doing. Does your method guarantee results? At the end of the day, hard work may not be enough. You still may fail. Just stay at it and go at it. That's the crazy thing about you and Hell Week. Talk to me about untapped potential. I run past a cemetery a lot at home. And when I run past a cemetery, it saddens me because there's a lot of people there, not because they're dead, because of a lot of untapped potential. A lot of us die never tapping into our full potential. And I often look at wash rags when I'm wringing them out to hang them up as my soul. And I won't be satisfied until every drop of that wash rag, which is my soul, is completely wrung out. So in my life, I won't be satisfied until everything I have in me is completely out of, and that's not be satisfied. Okay, but you're a warrior and an athlete. How can other people hope to replicate that? I'm, I'm, I'm not the best at anything. I'm not, I'm not gifted. I'm just driven. I'm a guy that came from nothing. Anybody's capable of doing shit like this. Anybody. I never thought it was humanly possible to do what I did. I went 70 miles. And at 70 miles, I was dead. I was at 100%. What I thought, what I thought was 100%. I went 30, I went 31 more miles after being in the worst physical shape I've ever been in in my life. And I sat in that tub and, and, and the wires hit me. And it was the most amazing feeling of accomplishment. I did this. I over, and as crazy as it sounds, it was the most amazing moment of my entire life. To overcome such, to come from this kid who was mentally tortured himself and was tortured just all to this kid, to this guy now, who was able to overcome such amazing odds and obstacles. What drives you specifically? I'm trying to find more of myself. And the only way I can find more is to silence the world out as much as I can because it's, it's, it's getting busier every day. It's getting faster. I'm on a journey of life and we all have a different journey. I like to take this four lane highway the easy highway we all love that four-lane highway we always step over the shovel that shovel i made my own path but going through this path of life this journey over here that you make yourself that's incredibly difficult and we're afraid that that dreamer mentality just would always fuel me it was fueling man what if i can be what if i can be a seal man now I, now i run 205 miles what, what, what if i can go what, just what if i can go and, and and what if how would that feel people don't like to take the hard road though why is that? It's easier to accept the fact that I'm just not good enough. You have to go into those dark chambers that we often shut off and you got to open them up. You fail and you're going to be in your head. You're going to be saying, I'm not good enough. And it's how you get through that. It's how you get through that on a daily basis when that thing is saying, man, I'm 43. I've done so much. You start to become civilized. The refrigerator gets full. You start get, making money and you start, I'm not getting cold anymore. I'm retired. At 40, people shouldn't be playing basketball or football. Or At 43, I'm still putting 100 mile weeks, still doing thousands of pull-ups, thousands of push-ups, because I'm not allowing myself to become civilized. The worst thing that can happen to a man is become civilized. You want to be uncommon amongst uncommon people, period. Mindset may be particularly useful to people that feel lost, right? You start putting yourself in situations that suck, you'll find yourself. I want to be forever proud of who I was as a man and change who I used to be. The liar, the insecure guy, the guy who can, whatever. I want to be proud. When I, if I die now, if I die at 80, if I die at 90, 100, I want to look at myself and say, I'm proud of myself. Another thing you reference is the importance of patience. I believe in patience. I'm a patient dude. 
I can watch a piece of grass grow for 20 years because I know that it, this is how you get somewhere in life. By being that monk-like mentality, being able to watch something grow very calmly, patiently. But when it comes to the brain, you aren't quite as patient. I, I can't go any faster. We do that to our brain. We put a governor on our brain. It's like we feel pain, discomfort, suffering, all those words that we hate to say because we're in this happy, peaceful world we live in now. We stop. We slow down. And if you can get through these different barriers and gain 5%, 2%, 3%, that 40% becomes 60. That 60 percent becomes 70, 80, and 90. And then you're hopefully one day near 100. Okay, so what people don't realize is, is that you are not always like this. You weren't just born this way. I was, like I said, 297. I was about 32% body fat. And I went, my idea was to run four miles for my first run. I ran a quarter mile and walked home. I walked home, sat on my couch and cried. I sat down and I gave up. What did you do the next day? The second day, I went right back after it again. But I started realizing I can't run that far. So what I did was I became damn near a professional cyclist with the miles I put on the bike. I, I go to the gym and I developed this crazy workout where I was doing volume two, 300 reps. And I spent hours in the pool, hours in the pool. I had to live in the water. So this was when you were training to become a Navy SEAL. The bike got easier. I was able to run more. I went from like, one mile, one mile is a great accomplishment. Two miles, and then from two to three was a big one. Then I went from three to six. I failed, I go back to scratch. But I started realizing this is part of the process. This is part of the journey. I'm just not good enough. I'm gonna make myself good enough. When we have bad times in life, even the hardest person in the world, we forget how badass we are during that hard time. I have a thing where I take a couple seconds to reflect on, hang on, man, you've been through, been through this, you've been through that, you overcame this, overcame that. I don't ever close my mind to the fact that this can be done. How do you feel about quitting? I've quit several things. I know what's on the back end of quitting. I wanted to be a man that detests mediocrity. I started callousing my mind at this point in my life. I lost the weight and I went back to recruiter. I got into that class. I went through three Navy SEAL Hell Weeks in one year. Only guy to ever be in three Hell Weeks in one year to my knowledge. The first one I didn't make it through, the next two I did. Say that almost nonchalantly, but Going through Hell Week even once is insane. To do it three times. And I started opening different doors that I didn't think were even there, that I didn't think even existed. And the more doors I opened up, the more I started realizing that my potential is damn near endless. I wanted to feel something besides defeat. I wanted to just go to distance. And that going to distance pushed me to a point of where now I go way past. I didn't have a motherfucker come wake me up at three o'clock in the fucking morning, say, hey, you gotta get your shit in. I had no trainer. I didn't have a, a nutritionist. It was the self-discipline that I had to survive, to not survive, survive, I was weak, to, 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 to thrive. No one said, hey man, you're 297 pounds, man. I wanna help you out. Let's talk about self-discipline. I think it's been keyed in your life. I had to overcome and, and it, 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 it self-disciplines everything. And if you don't have it, I, I don't look at you right, because I know you're capable of more. It's not discipline so much for me. It's all on you. It's all on you. The self part is what's big. We count on people too much to get us through shit. And we look to our right, we look to our left, we're looking for help. And if you can build that self, you can build that total accountability in oneself. We often forget how hard we are, but you gotta reflect back, T take a couple seconds to reflect, I've, I've been through this, I've been through that. If you don't believe it, you haven't endured shit, you're just blowing smoke, man. Okay, so w what's the uh, dog mentality? And this NFL football player comes up to me. He goes, guys, can I ask you a question? How do you keep that dog mentality? I said, let me ask you a question. When you were younger, what did you want to be? He said, an NFL football player. But once I got there, I lost that dog mentality. He had a finish line in his brain. Guess what? A true dog mentality? I have a dog at home. He never gets full. It's not enough you made to the NFL. It's not enough you ran a 5K, win a 10K. It's not enough you became a doctor, be a better doctor. It's not enough you lost 50 pounds. Go out there and do something with it. Guess what? It's 109 out here, but guess what? It's not enough. Stay hard. Yeah, when you were running today, didn't something similar happen? Today I was running, and this guy passes me in the car. And it's about 100 degrees out here, 70% humidity. And the guy comes back around, looks at me, 
He pulls his car by me and says, why are you out here? I said, because you're not. Sometimes your motivation needs to be because no one else wants to do it. We need doctors, we need dentists, we need teachers. We also need savages. This message I do is not for everybody. Someone say that soft bullshit about me. Do you have sunscreen on? This message is dangerous. It's too hot. I'm not asking you to be like me. Do you. Stay hard. How do people get results in their life though? Put a challenge in front of yourself and you attack it, that's when you find inspiration. Repetition every day. Stay hard. In times of need, put them on mental Rolodex in your mind. And when you don't want to do shit, roll through your brain. Pull up that person who said you couldn't do something. Work fast enough, good enough, smart enough. Use it for energy. Instead of killing them with kindness, torture them with success. In life, we have to continue pushing past the odds. Use everything this world has to give you for fuel. Stay hard. And anybody, not just Navy SEALs, but anybody that can accomplish anything that is hard. The only separator is, is that they really want to be there. There's some people that get inspired and that inspiration moves them to try to do something. But that inspiration is very high right now in this nice environment. We're in a nice environment. I watched a movie about some badasses. You're inspired. But the second you're not in this environment and you're actually doing what inspired you, that suck factor is now real. You're now there. And only those people who have been there a million times in their minds and have lived in that water and have suffered a million times and realized my legs may break, my knee may break, my bones will hurt. I will be the coldest I've been in my life. I will be miserable and accept that. When you get in a horrible situation in life, your mind immediately says, get everybody's dust, even if you want to be there. But it starts to have all these different questions in your mind that one second. And it says, okay, why are you here? Why are you doing this? Why this? Why that? And then you start to say to yourself, if you don't want to be there that bad, I have a beautiful life. I'm not going to break my body up to do this. Your mind starts to say, yeah, this is stupid. But if you, have, if you are already knowing that this is going to happen to you, you have all the answers to these questions that your mind starts to give you when you're in suffer mode. Okay, what you are saying is super inspiring, but how do we make it actionable though? Try to be 10% better than you were last week. So if you're running 30 miles a week, run 33. If you're swimming 500 meters, swim 550. The more you walk away from accountability, the weaker you become. Find yourself in the grip of life. You can't find yourself by doing nothing. So there's a lot of pockets of weakness nowadays. And we try to fill those pockets with lies. I did it for many years. I just want to thank our sponsors. Head over to unlimitedcrypto.co to get free cryptocurrency when you create cryptocurrency accounts. Free cryptocurrency, why would you turn that down? Just go down to unlimitedcrypto.co. So our second sponsor is influentialme.com. That's influentialme.com. If you want to get some influencer marketing, influencer marketing is the future of marketing. It's high trust. People don't want to respond to ads that they see when they're just spamming up their Facebook feed. When it's from a real person, it's a completely different story. Go to influentialme.com and revolutionize your marketing. Get it modern. Make sure you're doing the best kind of marketing available to your business and find out more at influentialme.com. Thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe and give us a five star on Apple Podcasts. We appreciate it so much. Have a great one. Goodbye.